So this morning I get up on my way here and I grab two, I've got two backpacks, one with all my workout supplements in it, one with my church stuff in it. I grabbed the wrong, wrong backpack, got to Starbucks, opened up the car, I was like, I got to go back to the house. Jump in the car, go back to the house, come in, come in. Now my normal seat was taken. Oh. Yeah, you know that's a serious thing because, you know, <laughs> the, the anointing is in the chair. <laughs> it's in the chair. And so my normal chair was taken. And then my second one was taken. My third option was taken. And so I'm in the fourth option right next to the door. And so I'm like, all right, Tommy, you know what? We're just going to focus. We're going to tap in. We're going to see what God has for us. God's already speaking. I feel the power of God. So we're just going to focus on that. I sat down, opened up my laptop, and I was getting cold. I said, okay, we got to (laughs) move. So then I move to another spot, open up the laptop, start going to work, and the laptop decides to update itself. Now, if you all ever know, a Windows update takes forever. So I'm sitting there watching, and I said, okay, this got to be good today because this is just on too much right now. So then finally get it open. I start working on the sermon, got everything in there. I'm like, all right, God, we got this. We're going to do some amazing stuff. I hear what you're speaking and pulling things together. And normally I email it to myself so I could pull it up in my tablet. So came in. Now, in the middle of that, the reason the setup is kind of the way it is, is because for some reason they had an event here and they locked this door. So Aaron calls me at 845. We can't get in the room and we can't get in the building. I said, okay, this is during the Windows update, by the way. (laughs) I said, all right. So I called, you know, the owners, and they sent somebody over. Windows finally comes up. I email the message to myself. Come in. We do worship. Fine. I go to the back. It's halftime. I normally pull it up, make sure everything's working. I open up, open up the Word document for the sermon. It's the wrong sermon. So I get my, that's why I've got my laptop here. So this is going to be good today, (laughs) y'all. This is going to be good today. I'm just telling y'all, this is going to be so good. Now, a uh, couple of announcements real quick, because we talked about having the leaders meeting on the 27th and then the youth meeting on February 11th. All right. However, we're going to change some of that and move it into further in February. And the reason why is, as you guys know, we have filled this room already. And me and Brandy talk about it every week because we count how many people, because, you know, uh, some people come every other week and every week, and people miss, miss Sundays every now and again. And so we always say, if all of our members and our regular visitors show up, we won't fit. And typically they say when you're at this capacity, you need to move. And so we have been praying all last year about where we're going to move, what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, looking at buildings and this, that, and the other. And I just said at the, at the end of last year, I said, well, we're just going to wait till the new year and see what God's going to do. Okay. Well, the beginning of this year, um, Catherine and David Gant have opened up a dance studio in Marietta on Russell Road called Refuge Dance. And actually, they had contacted me when we were starting the church to see if we wanted to partner with them in the use of the facility. Well, I was really looking at Woodstock. I wanted Cherokee County. I wanted to be up north. This is, you know, I had all these reasons why I wanted to stay here. However, I said the wrong thing. I said, Lord, take me where you want me. Move us where you want us to be and let us put, yeah, don't pray that if you're not serious. (laughs) Don't pray that. I said, you know. I give myself to you. I just want you. I just want you. Take everything. I don't, that whole song. Yeah, all y'all sang it, so y'all lives about to get all messed up. So, uh, so I did that. Well, she, at the be- beginning of January, now these are prophets. So when a prophet calls you and says, the Lord put you on my heart to ask you this again, I pay attention. And so they've opened up again their dance studio for us to move into while we're growing. So it's just the next step in our progress. So starting in February, we're going to be moving down to Marietta. Amen. And you'll get the address. And so because of that, we're changing some things. So we will be here through the rest of January. And then starting February 11th, because the week before is like, I think that's the 4th, which is February 4th is the Super Bowl service party, and we're going to have that over at Chestnut Hills Community Center. So we'll be at Chestnut Hills for that one, and then the following service will be our first service at the new facility down there. 
Okay. Now, one, I'm excited about moving. Uh, one, because it's going to give us, we can almost double in size in that facility. So we can grow twice as big. Uh, in that, it's in the strip plaza. But in that strip plaza, there's room on the left and the right of the facility for us to grow into a whole children's church area with a nursery and everything that we need for the kids, because that's a very important piece. Because we just, you know, Super Dude's walking all over the place. He needs space. <laughs> he, needs, he needs a whole room of his own. And so we got to provide that along with all the other babies. All right, so we're going to be able to have a nursery, a whole children's area, and, and everything. So it's just going to give us an opportunity to grow into the next move while we're still believing God for the next space, okay? And I'm going to close with these two things, then we're going to get to the sermon, because a prophet last year that I met with said, you need a new building now. He said, you need to move now. He said, but you really are going to need to move after this next move. He said, I'm just telling you what I see. He said, you're going to move out of this, you're going to fill that up, and then Tommy, you're going to be needing to move to the next thing that's on your heart. So I just saw this as a fulfillment of that prophetic word. Um, the second thing is we're looking to take over, build, create a multi-use facility. That's what's in our heart, to be something for the community and as well as a, a place that's just where you can have receptions, you can have events and all that to the public as well as where the church can meet. That's our ultimate goal, and so we're moving towards that. So our move to Marietta is a temporary move just to move down there so we can continue to grow. With the, uh, the Gans are being a blessing to us. We're being a blessing to him. I just love what God's doing. Amen. So can we just celebrate what God's doing? Praise, praise God. And so we're going to wait to have our leaders meeting till, till, we, till after the move. And we're going to wait to have the youth event till after the move. So we're in there. Because so, that's going to determine a lot of factors and things that we're going to be doing. Okay? All right. All right. So we, we started this year off with some great prophetic words, great prophetic ministry. And then God has us in a series on prayer. Okay. And this series is called Help Me to Understand prayer, okay? And, and we're going to go through several of these this year, help me to understand different things in the Bible, okay? And prayer is so important. A couple of weeks ago, the Lord brought this word back up that prayer is the lifeblood of the believer, okay? Uh, if, if you don't understand prayer, if you don't know how to operate in prayer, if you're not praying, and I'm not talking about just everybody knows how to pray out of desperation. You know, the, 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 the old saying, Lord, get me out of this one. I won't do it again, all right? We understand that level of prayer, okay? But to actually function from your position of a believer in prayer is essential. And so, because if we just, you know, go into the Lord, uh, the prayer of desperation, the world does that. I know people who don't know God that all of a sudden come to know God in a desperate situation. Okay. And so, but we are of faith and we are of the house of the Lord. So prayer is the request and conversation we have with our Father. Okay, and it was so important that in Luke 11, the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. And Jesus said, okay, now, he, uh, now everybody says he gave the framework of prayer in this, in, in, in this dispensation again. And he said, you know, when you pray, you say, um, our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Now, if you grew up in the old church, there's a doxology at the, at the end. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, that actually is not in the Bible. If you didn't realize, that, that phrase at the end was added for eloquence in the Bible. And there are several scriptures that are disputed because they're added for eloquence. And, and the proof of that is, of course, I went to look up what the translation was in the Greek. It ain't in there, okay? So just save yourself some time. But after that, he goes into talking about right, right from that, that this is how you pray, okay? He doesn't stop. But he actually continues on to teach them. And he said, what, what, what of you, if a friend came to you at night, said, I have some guests coming in. I know it's late, but I need some bread. And would knock on the door. And you would tell them, look, it's late. I ain't getting up. But, they, but because of their persistence in your relationship, you would get up and give them whatever they need. And, th and then he goes on to say, uh, what, what of you, if, um, then he says, no, ask and you shall have, seek 
and, and, and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. And then, and then the next part he says is, which of you, if, you're, if your child asks for bread, and you being a good father, right? Your child asks for bread, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, would you give him a serpent? And see, in, in all of that was him teaching them how to pray. Yes. The, the Lord's prayer was not just it. He was trying to tell them, look, this is the framework of prayer, but you're persistent in prayer so that you can receive from the Father. And you ask, and you seek, and you knock, and, you, and, and what you're asking will be made available for you. And because you're a child of God, what, what God will give you something completely harmful to you when you're asking for something that's harmless? See, and so our concept of prayer needs to, needs to expand, okay? And so this is the word the Lord gave us, and then we're going to go into some really, really... This message is going to be an unlocking message, okay? So, so I need you to really tune in to get this. I know sometimes the way God gives it to me, I always say he gives me understanding first, and then I have to fight through the explanation, okay? But he gives me an understanding, and I'm going to do my best to explain it. But the word the Lord says is the insight that I am giving you from deep waters. Now, he's not talking about the church. He's talking about the place of deep waters, okay? The insight that I'm giving you from deep waters needs to be meditated on in order for it to take root and produce fruit in your life. Your soul needs an anchor and a place of rest. Your harvest is not stagnant. And he wants me to repeat that to you a couple of more times. Your harvest is not stagnant. Your harvest is not stagnant. Now, your harvest is anything that you are resting in and believing God for. It is not stagnant, okay? Nor resistant to your acceptance of it. It's not you, saith the Lord, nor should you make it about you. It's about allowing. Be free and let me work in your life. It's not you, saith the Lord, nor should you make it about you. That is a very important phrase. Oftentimes, we can make the reason why things aren't happening, it's about us. And it's not about you. It's not about you. Nor should you make it about you. It's about allowing. So be free and let me work in your life. Now, the word is very important because these things we're discussing do need to be meditated on. Now, meditation is a, an elusive word, okay, because people go wonder, what does it mean to meditate? And, and in the past, I heard meditate was muttering, so you mutter the word all day long, okay? But this is how God wanted, this is how he explained it to me this morning to explain to y'all, because we are very good at meditating already, because we know how to worry. <laughs> we know how to worry real good. Some of us are professionals at worry. Okay, worry, we can sit there and we come up with all the ends of this thing that we're worrying about. I mean, we can extrapolate all sorts of circumstances and things that could happen. What about this? What about that? What if this happens or if that happens or if this person or this thing? And, and we will wrestle with that thing all day long. Now, the event hasn't happened, but we're worried about the event taking place. And so because we're worried about that event taking place, it could be your finances, healing, social, you know, your family, whatever the case may be. But we will meditate on that issue till we feel like it's happening. I mean, we can break out in sweats, break out in hives, get sick, start throwing up, start sweating, palms get sweaty, irritated, upset. And then we begin to communicate with other people from a place yes. of worry yes. because that's who we have become. We have become worried about this, that, and the other. And so then when we talk to somebody, you know, and they have the nerve to say, how are things going? Yeah. And if we want to be honest 
will tell them how things are going. We won't speak truth. We'll speak the facts. And, and the facts are, I'm worried about. And so now that you have become worried, now you're speaking worry. Now you're talking worry. Now you're coming from a well of worry. And all these ends that, have, that you, you've made up in your mind. And, you're, and, 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 and then this whole uh, self, self uh, help industry, they call that your ego. They call that your pride. They call that your... Your, your human nature, Paul called it the flesh. The flesh starts speaking and declaring the worry. And then we wonder why the worry has happened in our life. Now, we are good at worrying. So we should be awesome at meditating the word. <laughs> because it's the same thing. You take this word in Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And then verse 6 says, and he will direct your path. Now, it actually says he will make the path you're on smooth. He'll make you. It, it really, really means that the path, the person, and who you are, God is going to redeem and make that person right. Yeah. That, that's really what it means. Now, what we're supposed to do is take that word and meditate on it. Means we think about it and we talk about it and we begin to extrapolate all the end results of how he's going to do it. What way can God do it? It's going to be so awesome when it manifests. I'm so excited about the word. And <clears throat> I'm getting excited. And, and you, you do all of that work and you do all of that same mental. And then when people talk to you. You talk to him from the well of your spirit. Yes, that's right. So when, when somebody has the audacity to ask you, how are you doing? You don't tell him the facts. You tell him the truth. God is doing amazing things in my life. My path is being made straight. I'm trusting in him. I don't know how this is going to work out, but I'm okay with that. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little anxious. I, and, and worry is trying to creep in, but I'm going to remain in a position of faith because I'm meditating the word that God has given us. These things that he's shown us, we need to meditate. The idea of spiritual laziness, we need to meditate. We need to take that word and go, Lord, am I being spiritually lazy? Are there any areas in my life where I am unwilling to change? I'm unwilling to to change and I'm unwilling to accept the truth where in my life am I unwilling to change and I'm not willing to accept the truth and, and, and here's an instant identification of it when God because all you guys all hear the word of God you guys all perceive the word of God y'all been taught very well about how to do it when it shows up what do you label it first? Do we label it coincidence, circumstance, or God at work in our life? How many of you have had the opportunity to laugh over situations in the past two to three weeks? I have. Oh, yeah. yes. I have. Yeah. See, that, those things need to be meditated on. Amen? Amen. Praise God. All right. So, he, he, let's see, because I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Amen. This understanding of prayer is essential to the new level of believing and receiving. This is good. All right. Believing and receiving in the sequence of our walk of faith is dependent on a strong foundation. Now, how many of you have heard the term believing and receiving before? If you've been in church a long time, you've heard name it and claim it, believe it and receive it, right? All right. The term believing and receiving, name it and claim it, whatever two terms you want to use, needs to be updated. It's not believing and receiving in the context of materialistic claim of things in order to satisfy our hunger for more and put that obligation on God. And I'm going to say that again because he said this. The term believing and receiving needs to be updated. It's not believing and receiving in the context of materialistic claim of things in order to satisfy our hunger for more and put that obligation on God. 
and then explain away why things are not manifesting as they should. The scripture says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Verse 13 says, the one who despises the word will be in debt to it, but the one who fears the commandment will be rewarded. Believing and receiving, in essence, is believing what God believes and getting out of his way and letting him make it happen whatever way he determines. Now, a fish in water never needs to think about swimming. They, I, I've never seen a fish get put in water and they pause and have to think about how to swim. They just do what comes naturally. The environment they're in is conducive to them. Okay? We in the spirit are like a fish in water. And we're supposed to just know how to swim. Which means when we hear, believe, and receive, and we're praying to God, now it's, it's, we give it to him. And we don't think about it anymore. We meditate on his word, but we don't think about it anymore. See, and, 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 and there's a difference. And this is what it means uh, to say, in, oh, whoa, 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 we'll get to that in a minute. All right, time to slow down. That's another jump. All right. Because if, if we... God wants us to get our hands out of the way so he can do some things, okay? And if we continue to think about, you can meditate on the word that God gives. You can meditate on what is going to happen. But we can't, me and Brandon were talking about this yesterday, but you can't take ownership of what the outcome is supposed to be. Because the minute we say God's going to do it this way and he doesn't, we're hurt. And if he leads us on a course that does not fit with the end result that we've already taken ownership of, we got a problem. And now we're wondering if we were believing correctly. And then what we'll do is begin to change and reconstruct our faith because we got to come up with a reason why we missed it. Am I talking to the right people? We got to come up with a reason why we missed it. And usually... And usually we'll come up, the, the reason why we'll miss it. Now, most of us will not blame God. If you blame God, you're in a lot of trouble. But most of us will not blame God. But we will easily say something's wrong with us. And the minute we say that, Lord, he's drawing this out really big. The minute we say that, the next time God speaks, we don't discern it correctly anymore. Because we don't know if we heard right the last time. Because, because we put our faith in the wrong thing the last time, and it didn't take place. And so because we have taken ownership of some outcomes that we shouldn't take ownership of, but we're supposed to release our faith and leave it up to God and then go along our path so he can make it straight, because we didn't do that process, now there's a friction. And when there's friction, there's heat. And when there's heat, something has to give. And usually it's us. And so then we end up walking this Christian life more uh, on, on, the, on the edge of hope, on the edge of worry, on the edge of concern, on the edge of doubt, and never really walking in faith. And, see, and, 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 and we have to get to the place of faith which is a place of dependency on God. I told you this is faith school. All right. All right. Now, when we pray, our prayers, now we close our prayers with, in Jesus' name, amen. All right. That's the closing statement of most of our prayers. There's a power. We talked about the power of amen, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But what God wants us to understand is what does in Jesus' name mean? It's the, you know, it's the pre to the amen. Okay. And so we get that from in Matthew 18, 18, 19, it says, And again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Matthew 21, 22 says, Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Again, I say to you, 
If two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. John 14, 13, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done to you. Now, to say the name of Jesus means what I just prayed is in alignment with the will of Christ, and the amen affirms it with the stamp of approval of the cross, okay? When you say in Jesus' name, and at 7 o'clock this morning, no, it was, it was last night, falling asleep last night, waking up this morning, the Lord said, if you say in Jesus' name, what you just said must be a representation of the promises of Jesus. So, so you can't say, hey, super dude, I know, he feel the word. So, if, if what you're just praying does not line up with the, the promises and will of God, and then you try to amen that, okay, you've just amened things that are not in line with the will of God. So it's important for you to know the will of God about your situation, okay? Because should we pray for those who are sick? Yes. Should we pray for those who are ill? Yes. Should we pray healing for those who are ill? Yes. But, but listen, there's times I've prayed for people and they died. I don't know about if that's ever happened to y'all. There's been people who said, can you believe God for this, that, and the other? And the person died. Okay, now, we don't know what to do with that. Now, some people will say, well, prayer doesn't work. Some people will say, well, healing went out with the disciples. Now, you know, I just tend to believe, look, I know people, I've seen people slowly pass away. And I've seen them remain in faith, but they're still passing away. And I don't know, I don't know if somewhere in that, that, that place, they got a glimpse of where they're going and was okay with it. I don't, I don't know what happened in their heart. Because people will tell you, people who have been sick and dying of cancer, all of a sudden, Brandy's mom overcame cancer three times. Now, you got to know her mom. Her mom is persistent. She said, look, I can't imagine y'all going on without me. <laughs> she said, this world would not be as great of a place without me. So I am not going anywhere. She calls me nice son. Nice son. <laughs> Yeah, so she got all sorts of other reasons why she's still here. But I've seen people's will to live, overcome all sorts of other circumstances and things. And then I've seen people succumb to death. I don't, I don't know why, okay? I don't know why. And that's, that's a piece we don't know. But we know God's will is to, pray, is to heal. And whatever way that healing happens, we have to let it. Even if it's a healing of a soul and a family through the process of transferring from this life to the next. See, that, 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 there's a proper way of saying in the name of Jesus that we have to be comfortable with. We have to be okay with saying, our Father, who dwells in heaven, holy is your name. Father, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth. Just like, it's in the, just like it's in heaven. That means I'm out of the way. Lord, just give me this day my daily bread so I can eat. So we have supply. And forgive me my sins just like I'm forgiving other people. And Lord, don't let me fall into temptation. And if I do, deliver me from the evil one. And I'm going to be persistent in my prayers to you. I'm going to be consistent in seeking your faith. And I know that you are a good father and will give to me everything I need. In Jesus' name, amen. See, I'm a, every time he takes us to this stuff, you feel how relieving that is? We, we feel a refreshing from God when he puts it in proper context. Now, he wants, us, he, he wants some of you guys, because he, he knows your hearts, 
that y'all will walk with sackcloth and ashes because you feel like you've been praying wrong your whole life. You'd have messed up. That's why your prayers ain't never been answered. That's why nothing's ever happened in your life. And you're just terrible for not getting this. And so, Lord, I'm so... He, okay, so to relieve you guys from going home, shaving your hair, throwing ashes and all the other stuff on, okay? <laughs> and taking the whip to yourself. Listen, this is not all your prayers that you have prayed before were wrong and never answered. Some of them may have. Some of them, I know when I went through this, I was like, well, that's why that didn't happen. That was all flesh. All right. But <laughs> there was. But what he wants you is just to come to a newness of understanding. Okay. Am I saying that all our prayers up to this point were not heard? No. Maybe some I already said that. But God is bringing us to a new clarity in our request to him. You know, as my kids got older, their request to me changed. And the way the request, uh, the way they request things has changed along with it. Super dude, he's so funny. So he, he doesn't, he doesn't talk yet. Okay. So he does not, he's learning, but he does not know how to articulate yet. Man, that's a, that's powerful right there. And so he's learning how. So what he does is he, now th this boy, we, he likes cooking utensils. <laughs> now, he don't like to cook. He likes to beat on things with them. Yeah. And so we pick him up and he'll point and grunt, uh, and we'll go down this way. And then he'll point that way. And then he'll point this way. And then he'll point over to the kid. And then, and, then, and then he's figured it out. So he'll grab one, put it in his one hand. He'll grab one and put it in his teeth. So he can have three. And then he's got all three. And then we put him down, and then he'll go to the cabinet door, and he'll find the metal bowl. He'll flip it over, and he'll go, ping, 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 ping. Go, go to town. Go to town. He's a treasure drummer. Go to town. And G-Paw loves it. I let the boy play whatever he wants. You know, we just throw it all in the dishwasher when he leaves. But that's how he's communicating, okay? His, his mom, when she was little, communicated with us another way, mine. That's all she said was mine. All right. That's how, that's how she let us know. <laughs> Whatever we was touching, mine. So, <laughs> as, as the kids got older, they began to learn how to articulate. So around five, six, seven years old, they learned how to request different things. When they became teenagers, they learned how to articulate through text messages. Now they send us a text message in the other room. But they're going to send me a text message. They're in the other room, 100 feet away. They are, anyway. <laughs> now that they're older, their requests have changed, and now they communicate to us a different way. Now, they've been communicating to us the, same, the whole time. We've been getting it. It's just the articulation had to change the older they got. And see, and, and the more they develop, the articulation in their requests gets better. My youngest daughter, Diera, is in Columbus State University. She loves to read. She likes books. So her articulation was always very, very good compared to her sisters and even others at her grade level because she learned how to articulate and communicate better as she grew. Okay? Now take all of that and put it into prayer. This is what God's doing. He's just helping us to learn how to articulate our request to him better. See, at one point, we were communicating to him as a child. I want, I want, I want, this is what I need, this is what I need, key, get me, key, take me, key, get me, this is what I need, this is what I need. But God's saying, okay, how about you just let me take care of you? Bring your request to me, but leave him in my hands. How about you just let me take care of him? How about you not figure out how I'm going to take you to get ice cream? But trust that I know your favorite flavor, your favorite place to go, and I have unlimited resources to make it happen for you. How about you just let me do it instead of telling me where to go and how to get there and what time we need to be there because you got stuff to do. It's real. How about, how about you just leave it in my hands? How about you just do your part, which is get your shoes on, Get dressed and be sitting at the door. How about you just, that's your part. That's your part. Your part is just make sure you dress for the occasion. <laughs>
That's your part. My part is to make that occasion happen so big for you that all your friends are going to be envious of your daddy. Man, all your friends are going to be envious of your daddy. They're going to be envious. You know, when my kids realized that they had cool parents, I don't know what was wrong with them. (laughs) They realized it when they brought their friends over. They brought their friends over. And all the guy friends was wanting to hit on on, on their mama. It was like, she's so young. And my guy was like, she is. You better watch it, dude. I'll fight a 12-year-old. Anyway, I'll fight a 12-year-old. I ain't scared, dude. And don't let this pastor get it twisted, all right? Don't, don't, don't get it twisted, all right? Don't, don't, you know, I'm from, anyway, all right. <laughs> but then they'd come back and say, my friends think y'all are so cool. They think y'all are the coolest parents in the world. And we tell them, oh, we always do that. Y'all just need to get on the same page. Our God is so cool. Amen. He's the coolest father in the galaxy. Yeah, amen. We just got to get on the same page amen. so that everybody else can see. Man, that's just, man, God, that's just so warming. Yep. Amen. And see, and, and this is, uh, I'm, I'm going to close with this. And this is where the teachings on oneness on Wednesday night are so important. If you haven't been tapping into them, you and if you can't get on on Wednesday, that's why I record it. So you can listen to it. You, you, if you're in traffic on Thursday, turn it on. You ain't got nothing else to do. Just, just turn the talk radio off and put me on for 20 minutes. And then you could go back to listen to what you were listening to. But I'm pretty sure after you hear the word, you ain't going to want to turn it back on. Because the teachings on oneness are helping us to align our heart And put our faith and trust in the Father. See, I always use my kids as as an example because we it's it's relatable for us. You know, my daughter called, "Daddy, the car's not working. What's going on with it?" And she's telling me what's going on with it. So what does what does Daddy do? I go to work. I take it over to Midas. Tell him to give me a call. My other daughter. What was this? Two nights ago, she calls me. I was driving home from work. I hit something on the road. I got a flat tire. I called some friends from school. Now, she's in Columbus. All right. So I'm on the phone with her. One, I'm upset because I'm like, what were you doing? Okay. <laughs> but while I'm on the phone with her, I hear a guy's voice in the background. Ma'am, do you need your tire chains? She said, yeah. He said, okay, pull it over. I said, okay, keep me on the phone. The guy says, do you have a jack? Yeah. Do you have a tire in the back? Yeah. Next thing you know, I hear cling, 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 cling. Dude starts doing his thing out there. It was raining. It was cold. And she's still sitting in the car. And she's like, this guy's just changing the tire for me and everything. My friend's on the way. I said, okay, no problem. She's changing the tire. I said, okay. He took care, took care of everything. Her friends got there. He put the tire in the back. I said, okay. I looked up Firestone. I said, take it to the Firestone. Daddy's got it. Take it to the Firestone. Firestone guy calls me. Says, sir. The rim is bent. I said, what did you hit? <laughs> what did you, how fast? Okay, all right. You know, I'm laughing. All right, I'm laughing. Okay. So I'm on the phone talking to the guy, taking care of He knows somebody who can fix the rim. He can send it off and have it back. He said, sir, after that, I'll give you a call. We can take care of everything else. Right now, she can drive it limitedly, but when she brings it back, we'll take care of the tire and everything. Okay. Now, Never once did either one of my girls bug me to say, Daddy, are you going to do it? Not one time did they say, are you taking care of it? Are you sure? Where is it going? When is it going to get there? How is it going to get there? What are we going to do? Do you got, uh, how are we gonna, how's this going to be paid for? How's it going to be? What's going to happen? Oh, and then, then, and then wake up in the middle of the night. Are you sure the car's fine? Is it going to be taken care of? Well, how am I going to get to work tomorrow? 
Well, what if it's not done? Well, what if they don't find the part? Well, what if it's not fixed? Well, what's going to happen if they can't fix the car? What's going to happen if I don't get a ride to work? What's going to happen if I lose my job? And if I lose my job, then what are me and Roman and what we're going to do? How are we going to make up that income? That's what we do. They didn't do that not once. They went to sleep. Well, my other daughter decided because she couldn't drive a car to prank call everybody. It, it was serious. But she, because she, was, she figured this would be fun. I can't go nowhere, so I'm going to bug everybody else. <laughs> and she prank called Brandy. She prank called her sister. She prank called her. She didn't prank call me because she figured the tire situation would have put me over the top. She said, Daddy, it wouldn't have been funny. So, but... No, she, she was having fun while her dad was taking care of her problem. Amen. She was off having a good time while daddy was handling her business. Yeah. She was off prank calling, laughing, going out with her friends, asking me to order her a pizza. All this. She was having a good old time in her life while her daddy from his resources was taking care of her problem to get her back on her road to do what she's called to do. Yeah. And listen. We have to do the same thing when we give our request to God that we know is in his will. We know he'll take care of it. We know he can handle it from his, his intergalactical resources. He can take care of every situation we got. We, so, so because we know that, because we trust him, because we believe in him, because we have faith in him, that we're supposed to bring our request to God. Yes, it's in his will. So be it everything's taken care of and then we're supposed to laugh and go on about our business and let God take care of these things for us my gosh that's what prayer is all about that's what it's all about and because we know the heart of our father we're in oneness with him and we know it is finished (laughs) It's done. It's done. It's done. What you've been believing for is done. What you've been asking is done. It's finished. It's complete. It's taken care of. So don't, don't go back to God and try to take it back. Let him have it. Let him have it. Let him have it. Don't worry about it. Don't be concerned about it. Don't even give no thought or lack of slumber to it anymore. Not one second. This is what he said Wednesday. Not one second. Not one second. Don't even try to perceive the next five minutes. Stay in the moment with him now. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But what's going to happen when I leave here? You're taken care of right now. Here, right now. You're taken care of right now. So what's going to happen to right now? You're taken care of. It's done. Right now. It's done. Well, it doesn't look like it's done. We don't live by sight. We live by faith. Because eventually the sight is going to catch up to your faith. God, you are so good. Thank you for ministering to a deep part of our heart today. Father, that you draw from deep wells and deep waters to pour upon us and give us moments of refreshing. That's what repentance is. It's a moment where we change the way we think and then feel refreshed in the process. And then the signs and wonders follow that refreshing process. Lord, there have been prayers that we have put out. I know prayers that I put out (laughs) that have been improper prayers. I was praying my will, not your will. I was praying my outcome, not your outcome. I I was praying my desired end and not reclining in you to produce the best in my life. I know I'm guilty of it, Lord. And I know that you have forgiven me for those things because I'm just learning how to articulate proper speech. 
Just like I don't discipline super dude for not saying down or up. I don't discipline him for grunting and pointing. I kiss him. And I just know one day you're going to be able to tell me things. And you're going to be able to articulate. That's how you see us, Lord. As a good, good father. So, Lord, thank you for correcting our speech. Thank you for guiding us into a new path and a direction, new direction of understanding, God. Father, thank you for providing a new location for Deep Waters Community Church. That you've answered those prayers. Because <laughs> we begin to pray those at the end of the year. And look at what happened in 2018. Father, we just thank you for the move. We thank you for the growth. We thank you that we'll continue to uh, become the church and the body that you've called us to become. In Jesus' name, Paul and Betsy, come on up. Uh, Father, I pray for the offering, and I pray for the givers at Deep Waters Community Church. I thank you for those that sow into this ministry, Lord. And Father, I thank you for the abundance that you brought into this church to help it operate and function and continue on, and that you're going to do the same thing to those that give, Lord. You're just doing awesome, awesome things in this ministry. And even those, Lord, who may be watching this throughout the week, Father, we pray that this message falls on good hearts that are ready to receive and hear it. And Lord, if there are those who do not know you or do not understand you the way we're talking, that you would reveal yourself to them. Father, that you said that you will manifest yourself to them. Lord, manifest yourself to them, that they may know who you are, and then that this message will fall in good ground, and a harvest will be produced from it. We thank you, we bless you, and we praise you. In the awesome, abundant, mighty, and magnificent name of Jesus, amen. 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 Can we give God a hand? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.